Boom, 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 boom. All righty. I'm going to monologue for 75 minutes for you. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's how it works, right? Okay, good. Good to see some familiar faces here. Some of the Matrixology fans have made their way here, which is good. That's linear algebra, but, you know. The right way. Okay, so, um, yeah, so this is, this is Pux. Um, it's the ninth season of Pux. Um, I have fun with these things. There are lots of silly things in these lectures, but, um, you know, there's a big narrative to this, and I'm going to kind of uh, go over that today, right? So there's a big overview. I'm going to try, I'm going to put things on this screen throughout the, so if you're okay, you're okay. You're, you can talk, everyone can move that way if they want. Um, we're doing well to fill up the room so far. Okay, but it's a strange uh, shaped room. Okay. All right, so let me see. So lots and lots of things. Uh, this has evolved over many years, and I need to tell you all sorts of things. Okay, so we have a website, um, and it, I'll show you some bits and pieces as we go along. But, you know, there's some basic things here. Like I said, I didn't print these things out, but there's a, there's a um, uh, I'll have a link to it, a syllabus and those sorts of things. Here you go, course syllabus, and there's a poster. If you want to put a poster on your wall, well, it's not working. I'll fix that up. Oh, boy. There are so many things in this. Okay, so, um, okay, all right. I'll explain how the slides work in a little bit. Uh, as you can see, we record things. We've got the funny little recorder up there. There's a, see up top? Yeah. So we'll see how that one works out. Um, this room was kind of partly built because I've created this madness myself. Um, so it's good. Anyway, the idea is you come to the class, right? And I will talk to you here and so on. But I'll put these things up as well. And it's, this is your version of Pox. Principles of Complex System is very nicely Pox. We will talk about contagion. Um, so it all fits. Spreading is a big thing. Um, and this is your version of it, right? So it'll be online. Put all, I put everything up on YouTube. It's all nicely done. There are tweets and all sorts of things. But I'll tell you how that works as we go along. Uh, you can come back to any piece that you want. Uh, I'll put up little videos uh, explaining, you know, if there's a, say you, you, know, you have a problem on something and I can put it on a video, I'll, I'll do that, right? It might be on a post-it note or something, but I'll video it and um, load it up and send it out to everyone. So there'll be lots of things. Uh, sometimes videos will appear inside assignments and stuff like that, okay? All right, <coughs> so we're trying to, you know, drag ourselves into this century. Um, Okay, so there is a, there's a Twitter handle, so th as I said, this is, a, this is a course, topics will go over in the slides, um, episodes and slides will appear here, uh, so there's, there'll be a little uh, episode guide up here, and then sli so episodes or lectures, right, I'm being funny, um, slide guide is here, so these are all the slides, there are three versions of each slide set, and I'll kind of come to this in the first slide anyway, but um, one of them, let me see if they work, yes, oh my gosh, it's kind of, these are a little heavy, some of these. <laughs> getting excited about figures, but this is um, something you can print out, although you might kill a printer. I may have to go and figure out which figures are too heavy for this. Okay, let's take them forever. It looks like this. Um, there are three flavors for each one. So here's the handout one. Right, it's gonna be like a nice thing you can print out, okay? Six slides per page. Um, and then this one here is the slides and they're flattened, right? So there are none of these little funny reveals that I put in so I can give the lecture. This is the lecture as, as it's done, right? For some reason, there's a giant hot dog here, but I'll explain that. Um, so I've got seven up. We'll eventually have many, many things. Uh, but this is the, the start to the semester. I mess around with a lot of things. I, you know, so sometimes they explode. Um, but lots of upgrades as we go along, all right? Okay. Uh, and you're welcome to tell me things don't work. Please tell me things don't work. They're blowing up. Um, I will fix things up. All right. So that's episodes and slides. Assignments will appear here. There'll be some fun version there. Um, I know you're looking forward to that. Okay, so we have a, a Twitter handle. So you don't have to be on Twitter. If you love Twitter, this is good for you. But if you don't, you don't have to be. You can simply come to the website and it's going to be housed here, right? Um, and you can follow online. But that's where I will like to sort of present a lot of things, right? This is kind of like the news feed for the thing. So I'll house it here and, of course, you can follow the feed. I run about 12 different accounts now, and it's kind of nuts. Okay, but it's Pox Vox, the voice of Pox, right? Okay, um, so that's getting a little excited. There is, oh yeah, this is good, academic output, right? So this is, I'll talk about projects in a little bit, but over the years, people have produced papers that have somehow been, um, you know, uh, developed in this course in part, and we're up to 33 papers, which is a pretty good output, so it's, you know, 
and it's also with the next course, complex networks. Uh, so you can look through these. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Okay, so the latest one, um, I'm very excited about. It. Just it's just you know in the review stage now, but it's the hottest and coldest days of the year. So that's a completely different kind of thing. This one's about e-cigarettes on Twitter. This one's about um, turning tweets into calories. So you look at the phrases people use about food and they, they use about activity. I can show you this some, sometime later. It's called the lexicocalorimeter. And it, we get a, a number that correlates with obesity rates for the states, for example. I mean, it's kind of, it's totally insane. Um, this is uh, the game story space of a, of a particular sport, the greatest sport in the world. Um, no, it was cricket, actually. The Australian rules football. And that's uh, the arcs of these games, right? So I'm talking a lot about stories. That's what we're trying to get to here. This is a terrible thing. This is um, school shootings and the, and the interaction with social media, which is, you know, it's not super predictive, but it's there and there's some, there's some stuff. So anyway, this goes on and on and on. Um, surfing around, this is, you know, drone warfare, um, stuff about contagion, things about Google Books. All right, there you go. So if you're a graduate student, that might be a thing for you to get excited about. Um, yes, some um, explanation of video production. That's, you know, all this madness that you see before you. And that's basically the website. All right, good, good. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to show you. If my computer explodes, don't explode. Didn't explode. Okay, all right. So, yeah, there are like 60,000 lines of LaTeX code behind all of this now, which is... <laughs> very problematic. It would probably take a day for the whole thing to compile. Anyway, it's literally kind of a code thing. Um, you can click on all these things. Lots of things are clickable, right? So they'll all be PDFs. I'll give you nice PDFs. That, that means they are kind of heavy things, but get them off and look at them in preview or acro read or whatever it is. Um, lots of things will be clickable, as I said. All right, so today I'm going to just give you kind of an overview. We'll get to... Um, Get a little bit serious towards the end. We'll get a manifesto and we'll talk about complexity, which is this whatever this thing is, right? Um, it's been a bit confusing for people over the years, but it basically it's science, right? It's science. We're doing science. Just grow up and like dig your way out of your department, and you, you might have some fun. Okay, and but I'm going to talk about, and I'll probably you know have a go at everyone. Um, <coughs> I'll tell you some of my background so you can understand uh, some of my things. Okay, so. Uh, all right, so off we go. All right, so there's a team behind this. Um, <coughs> very important characters. Okay, so um, <coughs> let's see. All right, so orientation. So this is some basic stuff. So I'm uh, the director of the complex, the Vermont Complex System Center, um, which is a sort of ragtag group of people doing all sorts of interesting things. Um, and so you, you know, you can find out more about that uh, if, if you haven't already. But we also run, uh, Chris Danforth and I run the Computational Story Lab. And we do all sorts of stuff, as you've, you've seen by some of the things I, I just produced. Um, Chris comes from a weather prediction background. He worked with um, um, Jim York, who's the person who came up with the word chaos. The period three implies chaos. It's a great title. Titles matter, right? So um, that's where that word came from for dynamical systems. Um, lots of uh, team members here have gone off to do all sorts of other interesting things, and I've listed some of them here, but um, some of them are still with us, which is good. We don't want to lose them all. But we have a lovely team, a very happy team. We do all sorts of fun things. And lots of stuff are coming out now. Oh, yeah, and that's the Robotopus. Yeah. So we're our mascot is a robot. Um, it's actually a real octopus in a robot suit. Okay, we have a roboticist, jo Josh Bongard, who's world famous, so we had to throw him a bone there. Because <coughs> eventually his creations will kill us all. All right, so... This is a little summary. The, the, the clicking's not working, but this is a little sort of summary, if you like, just a picture for each paper of my career so far, right? So there's that thing that I'm calling a telethon. This is a word. I want it to become a word, telethon, which means the end of heat, like solstice is stop sun. Um, so anyway, that's that paper, the lexicocalorimeter and so on. But just to give you a sense, I came to the, actually, so I'm from Australia. I came to the US to work on complex systems. I read this book, and I'll tell you about it in a little bit. Um, but I ended up going to MIT, and they said, no, you're not allowed to use those words, right? And that's, that's wrong. <laughs> um, they were kind of grumpy. And, uh, of course, now that's what people talk about, right? So um, all the time. Anyway, so the first thing I worked on in, in the end was river networks. And so this are, these are continental-scale river networks. That's actually the, the Mississippi. Where's my wooden spoon? Okay. Um, this is the, this, that's actually the Mississippi, the biggest parts of it. So that's a lot of stuff about networks and they're branching networks, which will come to, in this course, certainly in the next course, 
Um, satellite data, right? So that's the thing. People have made up nice little theories about rivers and so on, about networks, and they've gone out and measured things. This is something that's become more and more of an issue, right? Is that measurement matters tremendously, and a lot of stuff has opened up now because of data. And we talk about big data mainly because uh, it's now about people. I mean, we've had big data in physics, we've had big data in biology, we've had these things, we totally had these things. We've had uh, just unbelievable amounts of data since about 2000 streaming out of satellites, right? For, I mean, sorry, for um, uh, telescopes and arrays of telescopes for uh, ast um, astronomy, right? And astrophysics, it just transformed the field. Suddenly you have to become data science type people. Um, but anyway, now it's about people, so now we're going to really talk about it. Now we'll call it big data. But this was a big data thing back in the day, and that's, you know, it was almost embarrassing to work on data in such a way to sort of, you know, if you come from a physics background, you have to have your beautiful theory about the world, which is also true of the social science, right? They, they, you need to have your great theory, apparently never having met a human. Certainly true of economics. Um, so we'll bash economics mercilessly. And it's easy to do because they do it themselves, right? So anyway, so... Um, but lots of things is about how trees fit together in um, forests, and that's uh, funny shaped trees. How organizations work, this is the small world problem, six degrees of separation, we'll talk about that, it's a big network story. How do you find people, lots of stuff about contagion, that's the SARS epidemic. This is about fame, we will talk about fame, so I'll, I'll explain to you how to become famous, um, <coughs> which is good, right? This is happiness, we get into happiness here, so we've done a lot more in this area. This is how people move around, according to Twitter. This is chopping up um, tales of two cities, tale of two cities, uh, into phrases, doing bad things to books. Anyway, so it moves more into stories, actually. So we'll get that. All right. If that is of interest to you, I'm happy to talk about it more. Okay. So we are here. You know where you are. This right, the website. This is the website. This lots of things will appear here. Even the Twitter feed. You don't have to follow it. You can just go and look at it on the site. I will preferentially communicate things through Twitter, actually. And uh, now and then I'll use email, but it's this horrible thing. Uh, and we'll try something else this, this uh, semester as well. I'll, I'll come to that. OK, but Pox Vox. So I have Networks Vox and Matrixology Vox as well. So. Um, <coughs> all right, so there are these things that I mentioned before. You can get them and print them out and look at them and tell me if they're wrong. But the syllabus is eight or nine um, pages. Some of what is in it is in here. Uh, office hours, I'm going to try this. It depends on what we can do afterwards, but it'd be nice to have half an hour after this lecture, Tuesdays, and then a couple of hours on Wednesdays. And this is over at Farrell Hall, which is a long way away, for if you haven't been there. It's a, that triangular building used to be the library of um, Trinity Campus. All right, so uh, you can come over there and talk to me. That'd be great. It is a kind of a team-based assignment story here, right? It's you, can, you can totally go line wolf and, and do it by yourself, but it is hard. Uh, some of these problems will be hard. We're moving into more of a, with this course, we're moving more from coursework, like here's the thing, go out and do 100 problems. That's great, but we're actually going to tackle some really big research problems that you know, Nobel laureates and so on sol solved, maybe some of them 60, 70 years ago, but you can sort of travel along those paths and see how you go, right? Um, there'll be some signposts to say, don't go down that path, don't go down that path, don't, right? <laughs> a few of you know the, uh, what happens is all the dead monks are down there, right? So lots of monks have died, so that you don't have to. All right. <coughs> uh, but I don't think, still, we don't do a good enough job saying, no, no, you shouldn't do that, all right? Yeah? And of course, even then, we go into it. We're like, well, maybe I can sort it out. <laughs> all right. <coughs> Littered with monks. Okay. So yeah, right. So ideas, I have... Monk lifespan should be how, how hard something is. Right in teaching, we don't do a very good job of this. Like, oh, calculus, sure. Do, 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 do. I mean, that was not easy, right? But now it's just like, you should do it. Okay. All right. So I'll give you some sense of the, the pain behind some of the thinking here, right? Yeah? Because it's a horrible reality is that you do all this stuff in undergrad, and then you go off and try to do research, and you're like, oh, this is really hard, and there's no, you know, I'm trying to do something new. So we'll, we'll have that kind of feel to it which can be unsettling. All right. Um, <coughs> okay, so this is part, this is, there are two required courses for the Certificate of Graduate Study in Complex Systems. It may become Complex Systems and Data Science, because we want all those people to, because um, they are our people, really. Uh, and so uh, Maggie Epstein teaches Modeling Complex Systems uh, as well. So that's the, the other, the, these two here. Uh, we have a couple of data science courses now that Jim Bagro has created. So that may become a uh, required third one. 
So um, you can say movie voice. Right, so we've got the, a master's in complex systems. It's just started up. It's complex systems and data science. That started up this year. Had, had to go through this, I mean, as you might expect, this incredibly Byzantine path of uh, acceptances, agreements, and so on. You know, and the probably looped around a few times. Provost is involved. Boards of trustees. All sorts of things. Anyway, got the big stamp. So it exists, uh, but only just. And we're going to try to get to, uh, a PhD going in um, next year. All right. And maybe it'll be complex systems, which I was sort of averse to for a long time, but it's all right. There's some stuff in here that you do not get taught in other areas. You just don't. You just don't. Um, <coughs> I don't know why, but you just don't. All right. Uh, in fact, you know, you, you see, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. But you see a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff paid, paid attention to the things that we can actually do, right? You see this over and over. Like differential equations courses are full of this. The first 80% are, here are things we can actually do. You know, great, you know, like let's, let's, uh, let's make up another, you know, separable differential equation. It doesn't exist, but I just made it up for you, so you can do it. Um, and then you get to reality, and it's full of differential equations that no one can solve, right? No one can solve. And so you have to use your friend, the computer, to do it. Um, and so it could, it could all be that last part. Yeah, anyway. All right, linearization, matrices, beautiful. That part, really good. Anyway, but we show you the things we can do with 99.99% of the stuff we can't. Just don't talk about it. All right. Uh, so actually, you can play around with these things, so you can go backwards and forwards and search with these little things here. So it's actually kind of like a little website by itself, each set of um, pages. Uh, these will be web links. Uh, you know, when I first started this course, Wikipedia was this kind of weird thing, like, you know, should professors, you know, tell their students to look at Wikipedia? I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, so um, I am very happy with that, right? So there'll be lots of links like that. Um, in fact, the code under this is word wiki link because it was all about pointing to Wikipedia. But anyway, which is not, you know, it's not perfect, of course, but there you go. Uh, so there'll be references embedded in this, and I get in trouble sometimes because I do put all these papers online so that you guys can get at them. And, you know, let's see. So let's see if it works. So it, it'll go to the back, and I went too far. But let's see if this fails. Oh, that's good. All right, and that links to the, p the, the, the paper, right? Cool. So and we can go backwards. Let's see if we fail. Yeah. Um, so that's good. So the bibliography is there for you. Just get it. Um, right, it'll jump like that. It'll take you there, and then you have to get the PDF, okay? All very nicely categorized by year and all sorts of things because of certain personal issues. Okay, so um, <coughs> yeah, so the PDFs are there. We just saw that. Um, I will link to uh, books on Amazon. Not that I'm telling you to buy on Amazon. I don't get anything from this. It's not like I have a little sneaky thing in the URL to, you know, get some grift on top. But it's, uh, people will do that. But it's uh, just that that's a good kind of reference thing for books, actually, right? So you can go about it, and then you can go and buy it from your favorite place, if you want to. But that I'll just use it. I have scripts to sneak off their little images and all sorts of things. But um, that's just sort of like a catalog, okay? Amazon. All right, great. Um, evil people. So lots of things are involved with these, sli <laughs> these slides. It used to be LaTeX. Now it's ZLaTeX because we had to go to different languages. Beamer is the under for this. This is for the LaTeX fans out here. Beamer is the uh, is the uh, the business actually in terms of getting slides to work. Early on, it was just a nightmare. There's Perl inside LaTeX inside Perl. It's just yes, true. Really, it's like a very it's like a Tuducken of scripting. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, there are, there are little, so I'm going to say Emacs because I like Emacs and then VI people will try to kill me. It's true, there's a violent disagreement between people about which text editor you should use. So this is not even talking about Word, right? I mean, this is like, oh my God, you know, those people. <laughs> but uh, Emacs and VI, wow. Um, yeah, crazy. Anyway, I like Emacs, but um, I realize that imperils me in certain social circles. Social is probably a strong word. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> You know, things like this, if you click on this, it's possible it goes to a YouTube video of Monty Python's. It is. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. <coughs> Important educational moment. Okay. It's still funny. I mean, some of the stuff is dated and a little unfortunate in, in, in tone, of course, but um, still pretty good. Although apparently th they weren't that bad. Anyway, so... I guess from the Spanish Inquisition's point of view, it's a terrible defamation. Okay. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. Okay, so, um, 
Oh yeah, we're gonna do nice things. This took years to figure out, but um, Open Sans is our font of choice. The Steve Jobs type people, uh, actually it's a Google thing. Uh, and the math will look good, that's an important thing. Math looks bad unless you do this. Mm. Important details. I know this is very geeky. We're gonna put it on, on uh, GitHub as well. But that's why it's called Super Exciting Details. Okay, uh, so it's season nine. Uh, we call these things episodes. They're naturally bottles episodes. You are trapped in a room. Um, I like tropes because I think uh, stories are everything. So you can link to these things and find out what they are. All right. Uh, last season's episodes are here. Let me, let me see if that actually works because I just want to show you what you'll end up with is this madness. Yeah, all right. So it's going to load. Hopefully YouTube gets smashed. Right, lots and lots of things. Yep. So that's what the, I'll, I'll curate them and make them look good. Again, the hot dog. All right. Uh, yes, yes. Ah. Okay. All right. What else can I tell you? Get my little thing and the stick. All right. So, uh, and you, there's been a lot of evolution, right? I mean, to start with, it was just a disaster. But anyway. So I, I had uh, supporters just finished. It's a six year grant, uh, the career grants are to help you for research and teaching. Uh, and I take the teaching part pretty si very seriously and made all this madness. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that was a big support, helped me buy a lot of these funny little gadgets that do and don't work. I have sort of a collection of things that failed horribly. I can tell you about them, which is important. Uh, the, you can see the abstract. This is a link to nice things people have said about the course. 99% of people say nice things. Anyway, so um, <coughs> you can do whatever you want, but uh, I will ignore the bad ones. All right, so <laughs> it's, it's painful. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we'll, we'll try this. We'll try this. Let's try this. So we've started to use Slack. I mean, it's been pretty big in a lot of businesses and so on for, for a while. Um, if you remain in the course, right, if your email address is still in the thing, then I will try to invite you to this thing. Um, and I'm kind of thinking, should I show you? Can I show you this? Will it be a horrible disaster? Mm. I think it's okay to do this. Yeah, so here's Slack for, uh, for the Computational Story Lab. And right, so th this, is our, this, is, this is the thread around this telethon paper I was telling you about, right? So we're dumping stuff in, saying yes, no, yes, no, all sorts of things. Shapes of games, that's the stuff about the football thing. Um, so all sorts of stuff, right? All sorts of craziness in here. Kudos, we say nice things. When people do good things, we say yes. Anyway, basically it's a discussion thing, but it's just beautifully done. It works very nicely on iPads and iPhones and all sorts of things. And I want to see if we can use that as a, a place to you know, put comments and so on, right? I mean, Twitter is nice and email is horrible, but um, uh, there are various other ways to do it. You know, and there, there's Blackboard, which gives me the heebie-jeebies. So um, I, c I can't go near that. Anyway, uh, which is the name to do with a horse, actually, a long time ago. Anyway, so uh, there's a message, right, yeah. Okay, so we'll try that. Let's see if we can try that thing. All right. Slack, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's killed email for us, which is really good. No more email and trying to sort things out and like, I don't know what, what happened. So things are all in nice little bins. Okay, so I'll, I'll, it's gonna be Team Pox. I, I registered Team Pox um, and Team Networks and Team Matrixology. Um, and you can install it everywhere and people will behave well. You know, so you should think of this, it very much is a public venue. And so yeah, people will do nice things, right? Okay. But it could be a good place to put some things. You can also get Twitter to feed into it, so we'll also have that as well. And I'll link to it on the website. If it works, it's, a, it's an idea. Okay, link the tweeters. You know, you can link GitHub in, all sorts of good stuff. All right. Okay, so some more actually how the course is going to work in detail. So it depends. We'll see what happens. But this is basically the idea. Uh, I want you to work on a project, and it depends... Usually it's been individual projects. Certainly people could work together and maybe we should do that. Depends on the numbers. Um, you give a very short first talk, three or four minutes. Again, it sort of depends on how many people are here. A longer one uh, towards the end and, and then a written project as well. And you know, I showed you these papers that have come out of the course. That's sort of one or two per semester. So that's not the, the burden here. And I'm not also certainly not trying to insinuate myself onto, uh, you know, people do work in my course that are with other professors and. That's, they're not listed, right? They're not listed. So, um, so it can be a, an incubator for ideas. That's the idea, right? 
to, to get research done. Uh, particularly for graduate students, for undergrads, I'll give you a list of things that you can tackle. You know, here's a paper that was published in Science. It says this. It's probably full of lies. Can you figure that out? You know, because that's how it works. Um, <coughs> it's so disappointing. You know. Anyway, all right. Uh, but you know, this is a very important thing. Like, figure out what's going on. Uh, and assignments or levels are going to be about maybe 11. We'll see. Okay. Uh, what else am I going to tell you? Okay, yeah, turning up is good. Turning up is good and noted. All right, uh, grading works like this for all of my uh, things. Pretty simple. Zero if you put nothing, or you've got it's a total disaster. You've answered something about I don't know, literary theory. Uh, one if so, think of it like uh, you know a paper coming back. If you need major revisions, it's a one. Two if you need some, it's pretty good. Three if it's basically all right, but you maybe you know, either it's perfect or you you messed up just a tiny. Thing. Um, so that so everything's out of three, and it's easy to add up. It's easy to kind of for you to understand why you got what you got, and it's easy for me to grade. Or for the Department of Truth, actually, we have uh, a grading, a nebulous grader, who you will never see, um, who's referred to as the Department of Truth. All right, so <coughs> they, I just hand it through a, a hole in a wall, and it comes back. Okay, all right, so that's what they will do, but it means they will behave well. These are things you know about. Right, I'm just putting them in the slides. As I said, PuxVox is a big deal. I'm going to go there. Um, if you have access, uh, come talk to me about it or email me, whatever it is. Um, I will respond to email, it's true. But I kind of hate it. But, um, OK. All right, so I think that's kind of the mechanics. And now we're going to start sort of talking a little bit more about what's in the course. So that's this part. I'll give you a little bit more about projects. Um, uh, and then you know, some, some sort of pointers to uh, things like centers and so on around the world. And then we'll get to this complexity bit at the end. How are we doing? So I'm confused because we started at 1.15 because of this new thing, and I have to think about when this finishes properly. I may write this down for myself. OK. All right. All right. All right. But assignments, as I said, let me just say that again. Teams, right? Work together. It's good. Thoroughly encouraged. Um, group suffering is really good. OK, it's important. Suffering is really important. OK, so, um, so it's, as I said, uh, standard kind of coursework to research focused transition, right? So that's where in between, right? I'm not just giving you, here's a topic, go and think about it. Uh, we're going to travel some pilots, but it's going to be a, a, a lot of different things. And the, the truth is, you know, when you get to a real world problem, you may need. It's kind of an algorithmic, algorithmic approach. You may need differential equations. You may not be able to do anything. You may be able to just sort of describe it, and that's kind of where it stops, you know, at least for now. So we'll, we'll get to that issue, which is a bit of a, a nightmare for science in general, because we've done really well for a long time, right? We've solved all sorts of things. We feel very, very clever people, you know? Science has taken off tremendously. Um, we got a little carried away with it. Anyway. So there's going to be a, a manifesto, which is just for fun. I'm just saying this. Um, but basically, we're talking about normal, what's now normal science, right? We have the data streaming in. We have these problems that transcend traditional disciplines, which got made up to solve very real problems. But you know, so many things are um, involved. You know, social, technological environment. There's a real, there's a real spread of things involved. Uh, and I, you know, no one can know all of it, I suppose. But you can certainly be well versed in lots of areas. And you can be kind of dangerous as a result. Um, but you certainly need to have a good uh, kind of quantitative uh, underpinning now. So lots of things are changing. I mean, you know, I, I spent, OK, so I should say this as well. So I spent six years, at my PhD was in math at, um, at uh, MIT. But uh, before that, I did um, an undergrad. I did six years of undergrad because I'm insane. So I did six years of undergrad because I didn't know what I was doing, basically. Uh, and it was science and engineering. This is the University of Melbourne. And it was just two degrees stuck together. Right? It was a, uh, a degree in science and a degree in electrical engineering, which sort of in principle would be eight years because just they, they started this new thing. So it's like, oh, fine. So it was for people who didn't know what they wanted to do but liked the math thing. Um, and then, uh, but I spent most of my time, as you saw, with River Networks in the earth sciences, actually. And then I went to Columbia and spent six years there Again, partly in the sciences, but mostly in sociology. I was actually in a, the social, a social sciences institute. So I, you know, I really kind of, you know, moved out of being the, the, the smarmy physicist who thinks they know everything, right? There's an XKCD cartoon for this that I'll put up. Um, 
uh, you know, it's like, it's a mess. And then we've, we've gotten somewhere. We'll get to that later on. But that's my background is a, a lot of work in, in social phenomena. Um, <coughs> all right, fine. So, uh, you yeah, know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this, you know, how much can you get with data? How much can you get with theory? And how much can you get with experiment? And these are sort of the three things you want to have together. And the really successful science fields uh, will have them, right? Fluid mechanics is a great example. And I'll come back to fluids several times in the course because there you have, we have the Navier-Stokes equations. We have equations we, which we can just figure out in our heads if we're Navier and Stokes. We figure them out in our heads with pencil and paper. It's unbelievable, right? But it applies to so many different things, right? The blood in our bodies, atmosphere, the, act, the, the earth, the mantle. I mean, it's insane, right? It's quite insane. But fluids, uh, flu the, the equation of fluid mechanics, you know, used in different ways, apply in all sorts of fashions. And, you know, that's a world where you have a great theory and you have lots of data, and potentially an experiment. But it's still a hard business. Um, when you get out to the, what we're talking about now is complex systems, eventually, you know, social phenomena, economic systems, ecologies. I mean, ecology, it's hard, right? It's hard to get remote sensing for, for ecologies. We can do it with forests, satellites, not bad. Who eats whom? That's tricky, right? Usually we have to go and interview the frog, right? By interview, I mean cut them open. So, um, not so good for the frog. Anyway, so, uh, you know, that's hard. How do you, you know, can your field move into remote sensing? And it can to some extent with people, which is scary and bad, and that's why we talk about big data, but, you know, because people tweet about their lunch or um, throw it up on, on Facebook, then, you know, you know, and of course that's some version of everyone, sure, fine, but that didn't exist uh, 10 years ago. No one was doing these sorts of things. So we're getting this kind of strange real-time sensing of, of, of people now, which is very odd. Uh, we'll talk about this nebulous term emergence, right? But it's a fine, it's a good term, comes out of philosophy or originally, but it's been, um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, let's see. And then these, these are the two big things. So universal, universality and accidents of history, right? So we, we've got DNA inside us. How probable was that, right? These are things we still struggle with. How probable was life? You know, the when did life start? When life started, was that, you know, something that was going to happen any time then, or was it just a freak, or what's going on, right? We're worried about that because we seem to be all alone. But um, I do think of life as this, the beginning of algorithms, actually, right? It's the advent of algorithms, moving out of hard physics, cold hard physics, with randomness and equations into little loops and algorithms. Okay, but so we, we, we worry about this, we worry about universality, which is a big topic, comes out of physics, that the details sometimes just don't matter. And the details don't matter for fluids, right? So honey, air, blood, these things all obey the same equation, which is nuts. I mean, you might think, you're sitting there in the 1700s, you might think if you're thinking about equations that there'd be a special equation for honey and there'd be a special equation for, for air. There'd just be a special equation. But actually, it's viscosity is the, you just have to rem measure the stickiness. That's pretty nuts. It's not obvious that that would happen. Of course, we all think it's obvious now, but it's not, it's not obvious. All right. Uh, a lot, and again, this comes out of a physics thing. We want to figure out, many sciences do this, not all, but many sciences really, at their core, want to understand how things become things, right? right? Pure mathematicians, no. No, not at all, because it's just all true. Um, all the things that are true are true, and we'll, we'll come to some stumbling blocks that that, that gives rise to later on. Um, but this is a big story. You know, can you talk about the micro elements of a system, you know, whether it's people interacting or if it's... Um, uh, particles interacting, and then describe the, the macro behavior that comes out, which is different from um, the, the parts themselves. So that's a in character, all right? Can you do that? Maybe. Um, and certainly we have beautiful examples. So we've, again, fluid mechanics is a great example, but we'll get to that. Um, lots of things that feed in it. So there's going to be scaling, so how things get bigger. If you think about animals, you have tiny ones, right? You have shrews for mammals, they're little guys, and then you have elephants, and, you know, as you go up, you know, you're sort of ignoring the whole trunk thing. What happens as you get up? I mean, do they, you know, how do they change in size? How do their heart rates change? You know, th these are important questions because you've got an ecology. You've got a whole system of these things. You know, how many are there per unit area, right? So that's sort of biology and connecting into ecology. So scaling, we'll talk about, and I'm moving this up in the course. We're going to talk about it on Thursday. Lots of different things with scaling. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, all right, well, I'll leave that. I'll leave that a little bit. But that's a very big, deep thing, right? So if you have a system with objects that, that go across many, many scales, so organisms are a good example, um, how, do they, how do they vary, right? So uh, surprise, right? So what I mean here is the statistics of surprise. We'll get to this, right? So Gaussians are the, 
statistics of boredom, right? Snoring, very good, beautiful universal story, but the ones that get us are the, the it's a completely different set of um, distributions. So we'll derive them in certain cases, we'll see where they come about, and we'll talk about why no one, <laughs> people have been averse to thinking about these things. Uh, but these are the ones that bite us eventually, right? So, uh, su so surprise, so you know, this is why things go bang, basically. Um, robustness, on the other hand, so a lot of systems that we see, I mean, us, all sorts of things hold together, you know, society somehow hold together, all sorts of systems hold together, ecologies, so we need to talk about that, and then they can have spectacular collapse, right, so we'll talk about generic stories for why that can happen, and spreading, so by spreading I mean very generally contagion, all sorts of spreading, right, so you can go from everything to fusion out to, um, you know, spreading of well, what's called memes now, thanks to Dawkins and, and various humans. Um, but, you know, ideas, beliefs, right? We've got all that. How does that work? Um, okay, and then why complexify, right? Why do we get this complexification? Because there's this whole story that everything should turn into a big soup. Um, again, a physicist story, right? That everything's going to go to pieces. I mean, just, right? That's bad. That's, that's, that's a bad thing. Maybe eventually, right? Of course, I guess. But um, we do get this local complexification. And this is an evolutionary story. That's hard to talk about. So this is where we're sort of moving out of physics into algorithms and physicists get very scared and don't know what to do, right? Biology is bad. Because there are lots of little special devices and there are games being played suddenly, right? Games that, that give rise to more and more complex things. So this is sort of, I think, still a big open story. Anyway, but I do things about stories. Uh, I'll talk to you more about what, I th what I'm trying to say there. But so it's sort of fun, but it's quite serious. All right. Okay. What else is next? Oh, yeah. So here's a fun thing. All right, so we have a mascot for the course. It is this fish over here, the John Dory fish. It's not a very beautiful fish, but it's from um, somewhere off New Zealand, I think, that one. Anyway, so what's the story? Some of you might know this, but this is just a thing from where I grew up, but it's really Cockney rhyming slang, right? Okay, so what's the John Dory? So people just say this. What's the John Dory? They say it all the time, at least in the 1980s, maybe. Um, what's the John Dory? They're very casually, so there's not much. You know, like that's just, you know. So it's rhyming slang. If you don't know much about rhyming slang, you might have fun with that. Hamatalea is a part of rhyming slang where, so beers, Edward Lears, and then you just call them Edwards, right? You drop off the thing that rhymes with it. So you get this, this kind of argo or slang that you'll hear in various parts of the world, particularly in England. You have no idea what anyone's saying, right? Because they're using things that don't even rhyme with the thing that they, right, okay. So taxis, Boris Spassky's, Boris Spassky played chess okay so um boris's let's catch a boris and it's nuts you know it, it has nothing to do with taxi it's, it's important that it actually has no connection meaning wise anyway so all right so that's our that's our little thing because language is very strange and the way we think is very strange and um there's a little bit of fun there for you okay so the john dory all right that's going to be just hanging around okay so these are the things uh we're going to talk about so uh, allometry, I'll define this properly, but basically it's where the scaling that's not isometric, right? if you take a whole bunch of balls and they get bigger and bigger, that's isometric scaling. But if they turn into kind of footballs in a funny way, in a special kind of way, very long, thin footballs or pancakes, then that'll be allometry and we'll talk about that. Um, <coughs> we'll get to it. So scaling of social phenomena, this is you know, recent work in the last 10 years. There's all sorts of stuff now, statistics on... Uh, say crime, uh, disease, so the sort of bad things that, that happen through social, having more people together. Um, but also then creativity in terms of patents, right? Um, so that seems to scale super linearly, right? So you double the population, you don't just double the number of patents. It actually gets a little kick. Uh, you also get more disease, and so on. you get a little kick like that as well. It's also, so that, you know, these are very interesting things. We'll get to it. Um, but it takes less uh, infrastructure to supply that population. So there's a returns to scale. So why doesn't everyone move to cities? Interesting question. Um, they certainly have. Uh, let's see. So this, this term here, power law size distributions, that will be a big deal. And we're going to work on that next week. Usually it's Thursday. The next week we'll do it. So-called non-Gaussian statistics. We'll get to this. And um, I guess it's on a separate line, but Zipf's law. So we'll talk about Zipf. Zipf is an early... Data Mediac, from who uh, passed away in 1949, but was a, a, a linguist who did lots of things with um, cutting up text and counting things. All right, but did much more than that. So we'll get to that. Um, 
All right, because we want to understand things. This is the big departure, right? This is why we talk about complex systems, why we talk about it in a kind of a physics-based way, um, is that we want to understand where these things come from, right? So here's this, you know, whatever it is, distribution of wealth, distribution of cities. What's going on? You know, people move between cities, so there's some kind of attraction thing, there's some sort of agglomeration mechanism. Can we propose a simple one that you know, basically produces that? Um, so there are lots of, I mean, we'll come along. There are many, many, I mean, there are many of these. Dis these distributions are everywhere, right? So if you look at craters on the moon, the diameters have a power law size distribution. And it's kind of nuts. Um, uh, wars, right? The number of people killed in wars, which is pretty shocking, but it's, it's like that too. Uh, terrorist attacks have a similar kind of story. Um, <coughs> and as I said, I think wealth, right? So wealth is like that as well. So lots of very different things. But Here's why it gets hard. It's because it's not the Gaussian story anymore, right? We have a central limit theorem, which we'll talk about, which has a sort of a universal story, and you kind of understand it completely. Um, these guys, there are different ways to get there. There's usually some kind of growth mechanism. There's some sort of rich gets richer kind of phenomenon, some version of it. But there are different ways to get to things. So there's lots of arguing, lots of you know, people, scientists being, being silly and so on. But these are, these are a big deal, right? Um, so, you know, how do we, what are the mechanisms? And I'll give you a few really basic, profound ones that have been rediscovered somewhat humorously uh, over and over and forgotten, obviously, or missed by, you know, and this is, the, this is one of the issues, right? You've got people in disciplines here and disciplines here, and they figure these things out, and then eventually we kind of get a big story together. That's okay. Scaling in biology, we, we talked about that. Obviously, we'll have some weird ones like platypuses. Platypuses are strange because they, they're strange for various reasons, but there's something that they do that, ma well, there are a lot of things, but there's one, there's one thing, the echidna is the same, right? Echidna is in the same box. They lay eggs, which is very strange, right? Okay, right, yeah. So the monotremes, so excellent animal. Okay, that's also the name of that computer. Okay, all right, so there'll be, this may, I don't know if I'll do this, but there's a, there's a whole uh, piece I can give you on uh, just, just a crazy, well, a history of science thing here of uh, scaling in biology, how much energy organisms use um, per, per unit time, right? Because again, this will matter for ecology. A mouse little ticker runs very fast and the elephant beat, the heart beats slow, but they live longer and all sorts of interesting things, right? But we may get to that, um, but it's people killing each other's theories. Very rude of them. Um, okay, uh, we'll talk about some very plain things in here with scaling, which is dimensional analysis. And this is just sort of the first thing you might do as a physicist or an engineer. Um, is just say, well, what's involved? Or I'll talk, we'll talk about that on Thursday. Um, okay, so a big, big piece in here, and we'll come back to it you know, quite a way into the course, is complex networks, right? So this really emerges as a thing, and I'll explain all of these things, in 98 and 99, right? So before that, yes, networks mattered. Um, people have thought about them, sort of fun ways and so on. But data started to change the the view of things, because we started to get data about all sorts of different kinds of networks. Um, and, you know, you've got the web. So the web is only, you know, it's 92, right? And, and then six years later, these papers appear in Nature and Science, because people have been able to kind of you know, accrue data sets, get them locally, and, and play around with them. And they're about very different things. There's, you know, how the web was structured, this, this, this young thing called the web. Um, I guess everyone said the World Wide Web. No one says that anymore, do they? Um, but the web, not the internet, but the web. Um, how uh, the, the uh, neuronal structure of C. elegans, right, was one of the first little, uh, you know, kind of brains to be sorted out. Um, uh, that's sort of things like actographs, you know, who's acted with whom, right? We will talk about Kevin Bacon. There's a real reason we'll talk about Kevin Bacon. Um, <coughs> but, you know, all these very disparate kinds of dust. It's the power network, right, the power, the power grid, right? That's, so that's a... That remains a real problem because we can't get all the data together and we can't model that thing anymore. We can model little power stations, but we can't model the whole thing. Uh, and so that's a, that's a problem because sometimes it all goes Um We'll say that again, that's a robustness issue. Uh, there are particular kinds of networks. So StatMec is sort of, it's an area of physics we'll talk about a little bit. That uh, underpins a lot of this. Random networks, <coughs> so as you might imagine, just have little nodes and they have, this one can have seven friends, this one has three, this one has four, and then just wire them up, do it again, break them all apart, wire them up again, and look at the kinds of networks you get. Now, mathematicians, Paul Erdish and um, some other famous mathematicians worked on this for a long time. It's a very famous, famous old problem. It's a very nice 
thing to think about, and there's some beautiful things that come out of it, but it turns out the real world has zero of them. They're just none of these pure random networks. They're great to think about, and we have to think about them, but the real world produces unlikely things. Um, I'll say it again probably, but it's akin to saying, uh, you know, all the particles are in the corner of that room, right, which never, never happens. Physicists will say, oh, that's just silly, right? Everything's going to be basically like this, and there are lots of micro versions of what the air feels like to us, so that's why it's most likely. But in terms of, because things are made, right, evolution produces things, and there are mechanisms that produce things, you never get to this kind of thing. You get to a very rare, unusual kinds of networks, right? So if you have a box of random networks and you rummage around in it, you never get these. You never pull one out because there are a tiny little fraction of them over here. So we'll see why that is because you're not just making them up in your mathematician's head. You're actually making them with mechanisms. All right, we'll get to that. Lots of things are connected. Yes, all right. Um, small world networks, so this is the Kevin Bacon thing. We'll get to that. It's true. <laughs> so how do you find someone else in a network? Can you do that? And how can you do it in a sort of a distributed way? Um, I got an email about this just the other day. Oh my God. Uh, people keep doing this experiment. I'll talk to you ab about experiments, um, theory, all sorts of good stuff there. But these are sort of these two, and this one here, scale free networks. We'll get to it, but it's, the, it's, it's uh, again connected to these very long tail distributions, non Gaussian distributions, where there are some nodes that have lots and lots of friends, if you like, many that have just one or zero friends. Um, although the way they're structured, they usually have at least one. Uh, so they have all sorts of properties. Things spread very easily on them. Um, they spread easily for different reasons on these ones and so on. All right. So lots of things. Search, contagion, they're allied kind of ideas. I know I'm just dumping the information. All right. So we're going to talk about... Um, th these, are, these are things uh, that I'll talk about more in complex networks probably, but... Um, yeah, there are hierarchical structures to many networks, many, many systems, and, and that makes them hard to deal with. Organizations are a good example. Uh, and modularity, that there are little pieces within bigger pieces within bigger pieces. All, all makes sense. But these, are, these have been hardened up because of data, right? We've said, okay, look, this system has all these interactions in it. It's basically some kind of network. Now we can put it in, shove it into a computer and do all sorts of analyses with it. It's taken many, many, many years. I mean, we're 15 years into this still, and we're still, people are still figuring out how to even just, really just starting to codify the idea that networks change with time, which we all know. But now we talk about temporal networks. Um, and it's, you know, a thing to work on. Of course, everyone's been working on it for a long time, but now it's, you know, now we're kind of there. We're able to do it. All right. Um, <coughs> as I said, um, so general failure me mechanism, so we'll sort of talk about it in terms of a forest fire, right? You imagine having forest breaks put down, you have a limited way of doing that, and there's some unevenness to uh, the probability of fire, if it's, say, lightning strikes, right? So the, the more of a chance of lightning strikes in this corner, you put more breaks. What, do you, what does your uh, optimal effort in putting these breaks down end up as, and what does that mean in terms of robustness? Most of the time, it's okay. But if you get a big, you get a strike out in this big field, it's a disaster. So this is a big story. It's highly optimized tolerance, HOT. It's a very good acronym work uh, by John Doyle and uh, colleagues out at Caltech. That's a beautiful story. Anyway, we'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Yes, information language will do these things, blah, blah, blah. Lots of search problems. Uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. We'll talk about language a little bit. What I like to call socio-technical systems, you'll see sometimes people say techno-social, but I feel that's... Not very nice. Um, so we will talk about spreading, basic models of spreading, and then complicate them in various ways. But there's disease and social type spreading, different things. Um, and so it really depends what's going on, right? So um, <coughs> you, know, you have interesting kind of memory in social spreading. Right? We'll talk a lot about marketing as well, actually. But you, know, you remember if someone told you about something or you heard about something, those things go into your head. Usually with disease, it's the other way around, right? You get an immune response. And that helps you a little bit in the next, next step. There are some things where you get more of a dose, but you can, you, your dose builds up. Uh, so there are some famous things in here. Mark Granovetter's uh, very famous work. Um, uh, so thresholds and contagion. So people have thresholds, and then they, um, they get exceeded, and then they start behaving in a certain way. Uh, connects to a lot of different things. Uh, what else? <coughs> yes, cooperation, all these sorts of things. All right, OK. What I like to call the socio technocene, right? That's where we are. People plus computers. Not really the Anthropocene. Okay, so this is a little rough. 
this I'm just going to show you that you know we're we're moving along in these different fields, right? Physics, you know, we're ridiculous, thousands of years thinking silly things about how the Earth went around the Sun and getting burned at the stake if we said the wrong thing. Um, that took a long time to sort out, right? So you know, the physicists are all very smug about how you know they have things to ten decimal places and so on, but there were thousands of years of getting things horribly wrong. Um, <coughs> And, uh, but these, you know, all these fields keep moving into this kind of big data thing, which is no panacea, but it just means that's just, it's just going to happen, right? And the social sciences uh, are one of those, sort of the, the last ones to, to move, I think. Um, interestingly, the physicists have managed to find a place that won't be affected, which is string theory, right? So that was very clever, um, because you can't measure anything that small. So, well done. Um, so uh, there's that. I'm not sure what will happen with philosophy, but you know there are various fields where there's a big data element to it, and it doesn't wipe out the other stuff, right? You don't just pull in, say, Google Books, which is, has all sorts of problems, uh, and then say we're never going to read Shakespeare again. No, that's 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 not what's happening. It's a it's a augmentation, right? All right. So this is uh, let's see if this plays. This is this is Feynman, who's you know, who's this is your archetypal snarky physicist. Um, I don't know if this is going to. Does this work? Ooh. All right, we'll see if it works. You tell me. Because of the success of science, well, there is a kind of a, I think, a kind of pseudoscience. This that should be plugged into social yeah. science as an example of a science which is not a science. Sorry. Huh. They don't do science. Like a plug. They follow the forms. Do I go to the special uh, You thing? gather data, you do so and so and so forth, but they don't get any Snap. laws. They, they haven't found out anything. They haven't gone anywhere yet. Maybe someday they will, but oh. it's not very well developed. But what happens is, no at an even more mundane level, we get well, experts sorry, on everything. Bear, bear with me. It Otherwise sounds I'll like they're sort of thing. scientific experts. They, they're to try to listen they're to not it. scientific. They sit at a typewriter and they make up something. It tells you like, what physicists uh, are like. Um. Oh, uh, food grown with... Uh, Fertilizer that's organic is better for you. Maybe true, may not. Right. Okay. Okay. And then we'll have a palate cleanser of Sheldon Cooper. Because of the success of science, there is a kind of, a, I think, a kind of pseudoscience that social science is an example of science. They don't do science. They follow the form. Uh, you gather data, uh, you do so and so and so forth, but they don't get any laws. They don't have They haven't done anywhere yet. Maybe someday they will, but it's not very really well developed. But what happens is, at an even more mundane level, we get experts on everything. It sounds like they're sort of scientific experts. They, they, they're not scientists. They sit at a typewriter and they make up something like this. Or a uh, food grown with. Uh, Fertilizer that's organic is better for you than food growing with fertilizer that's inorganic. May be true, may not be true, but it hasn't been demonstrated one way or the other. But they'll sit there on the typewriter and make up all this stuff as if it's science, and they become an expert on foods, organic foods, and so on. There's all kinds of myths and pseudoscience all over the place. Now, I might be quite wrong. Maybe they do know all this thing. But I don't think I'm wrong. See, I have the advantage. Of having found out how hard it is to get to really know something. Oh my God. How careful you have to be about technical things. How easy it is to make a space and fuse. I know what it means to know something. And therefore, I can't, I see how they get their information. And I can't believe that they know it. They haven't done the work necessary. I haven't done the checks necessary. I haven't done the care necessary. I have a great suspicion. That they don't know that this stuff is, uh, and they're intimidating people. I, I think so. I, I don't know the world very well. That's what I think. So physicists are very obnoxious, right? Um, and he's one of the smartest, you know, he's one of the brightest physicists of the 20th century. Um, <coughs> did all sorts of things, and they're incredibly adept. You know, I mean, he, he helped figure out the, the Challenger disaster, you know, what, what went wrong. They brought, brought him in. I mean, the classic, let's bring in the guys with the big brains. And... Um, you know, that <laughs> in that case, I guess he figured it out. But, um, you know, very obnoxious. Anyway, but uh, the, the, I don't want to start again. The, um, you know, the, so the funny thing is that physicists have now sort of run out because they've, 
They've stopped just, well, some of them still go to Wall Street to destroy the economy. But others, you know, have to escape physics and they end up in all sorts of areas. And so the social sciences are, are a place now. And so a lot of information schools are full of these sorts of people. Anyway, um, but it is, a, it's been a very, it's been a really interesting last 15 to 20 years. I mean, there are huge transitions in these fields. And that will just keep going. So you see political science students coming out uh, with PhDs are really well versed in data now. And, and they just have to do a ton of work on those sorts of things. All right, so that was obnoxious. Um, what else can we say? Um, but it's generally true, right? Where there's not enough data, theories can just flourish, right? They really do. You have fantastic, and the physicists did the same thing thousands of years, lots of theories. I mean, you know, the ether, we had all sorts of good stuff going on. Phlogiston, right? <coughs> so, anyway. Now, physics is easy, basically, is the story, right? That's really the extra thing you could have said. It's much harder to think, much harder to get around, to, to understand social phenomena, ecological phenomena, because the data is much harder to get to. And these systems are just inherently much more complex and they, m they are much more probabilistic in nature and algorithmic in nature. It's just that you, so here's the thing, you could get to physics first, right? You could get to it. We could make telescopes. We could, you know, mess around with things and figure out. Uh, it was just easier to quantify things early on. It was incredibly hard. I mean, it was insanely hard, but we could do it. And eventually we did, and eventually we were able to get enough stuff in front of us to say, oh, you know, okay, here's a, here's a this apple's going to fall like this and so on. But um, it's just, it's harder to assemble the data. We had to get to computers, actually. And a lot of things would have been different if computers suddenly just like a magic, like a Mac appeared in the 1300s. And a monk is like, look what I have found. Um, so he says, it's all Greek to me. What's that? So <laughs> yeah, they'd be the, those, other, those other monks, right? The, right, who would rob you blind, yeah. <laughs> With their beautiful promises. Okay, so... Um, uh, but it would have been different, right? Because we did a lot of stuff with pencil and paper and we did the things we could do. We just, there are some things nece you can't necessarily do, right? Protein folding. We figure out, we figure out proteins exist, they're a thing, that's a start. And then we start to worry about protein folding. The way that's actually being done now, right, is through folded, um, which I could maybe mention again later, but it's what I would call socio-technical computation, right? So that it's, here's a protein, uh, we'll put it, we'll, we'll run it like SETI, right? So the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, right? Which is, w if you've got a computer that's not doing anything, put our program on it and it'll, when it's sort of just hanging around, we'll, we'll run some stuff, right? So it's a nice uh, citizen science thing. Which generally for the search for, you know, that, that part, no one ever kind of saw any, you know, well, first of all, we didn't find anything. We could do the search for terrestrial intelligence first would be good, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess we gave up on that. So, uh, but the, the fold at one, they, the, the, the setup was it gave you a little thing that you could watch, right? So you could see this protein and you could see the algorithms trying to fold it and do things. But it was kind of obvious to a human sitting there, it's like, well, obviously you'd pull the rabbit through the hole. You know, like, what is it? why is the computer so stupid? I don't really know that um, algorithm actually. But um, anyway, it's right? So people started to write in and say, good God, you know, like, please let me, I want to kill my computer. Or what, you know, how have they responded? This isn't. This thing is struggling, but it's obvious it should do this. So now it's people plus computers, right? People put little algorithms in, and it's and then the what I call, well, I call it a play and crunch, but now we call it hunch and crunch, right? So the humans are the play, hunch things, and the computers do all the crunching stuff, right? So people can move things in a big direction, and then the computer can figure some stuff out. And it may take many people and many computers, and that's the real socio-technical computation. Google's like that, right? I mean, Google's a mess now, but... You know, when it started, beautiful algorithm, we've got a matrix, let's do some, you know, linear algebra. Um, but all those links were set up by people, right? So there was definitely people making meaningful connections and then a crunch coming on top to, to uh, yes, how are we doing? <laughs> uh, to, you know, to, to get out a, a real pattern. All right. Okay, we had Feynman. We'll watch Sheldon Cooper. This is, you know, the real version of the... Penny, Penny, Penny. This is for you. Hello, Sheldon. Hi. What is this? Read the question. 
questionnaire I devise. I'm having some difficulty bonding with a colleague at work, so I'm doing a little research to better understand why my current friends like me. <laughs> yes, well, that is a good question. <laughs> but is this really the best way to figure it out? Yeah, I agree. The social sciences are largely hokum. But, <laughs> short of putting electrodes in your brain and monitoring your response to my companionship, this is the best I can do. Okay. So it still goes on, right? Yeah, all right. There we go. There's our physicist. All right. All right. I'm talking too much. Um, so uh, let's see. So lots of other things. Um, large scale so social patterns, how people move around. This is, this is being first really um, tackled through cell phones, right? Somewhat dubious. So it's an anonymous cell phone company, just fed a ton of data to the Barabasi lab. No one knows which country it is or... You can figure it out if you've got the data. You can see which cities and so on. But uh, that's a bit unusual. But um, uh, it's just some enormous phone company rang, called, right? So of course they would. But um, le let me say that they did. Called and said, we love your work. And um, we'd like to give you data. So, so we don't know really what. But that's, you know, you've got, we've got these actually universal sort of patterns of how people move around. So there's some, there does seem to be something there. Um, but that's a very hard thing to get to in the 1800s. People definitely tried. They documented all sorts of things. Um, you know, it's, it's very, I mean, this is, a, this is a bad thing to talk about, but eugenics was a very serious thing for a lot of scientists. And you go into the 1930s in Nature and Science, the magazines, and you will still find, you know, the titles are about eugenics, right? Um, so you have a lot of people, H.G. Wells, you know, I mean, people, they, they, these people talked about it all the time in all sorts of ways. And so they did some of them, the statisticians like Galton, was a pretty famous statistician, you know, walked around cities and would count how many good-looking people there were. And they, I mean, they had all sorts of ideas about these things. They, they would have loved this, but they would have done terrible things with it. Um, so people have tried, you know, they want to find these patterns out. All right. Uh, we try to measure happiness, right? So we try to be good people. Um, okay, so, uh, but, you know, we find, look, you find patterns of what people do. See what they do. Uh, Decision making, we'll talk about that actually. Yeah, voting, those sorts of things, how that works, it's a big deal. Um, this is kind of, this was just a silly little thing, but basically this, this means fame, right? There'll be, a, I'll explain this, there's some little thing here that um, how things take off. This doesn't mean you'll become famous, but I can basically tell you how it should work. All right, so let's get rid of that. All right, silliness. Okay. I'm running out of time. So, um, so we're going. This is the, just the general story. We're going to have a manifesto, which may be. I'm confused by this. Um, next, uh, next Thursday, but we'll see. Um, talk about socio-technical systems quite a lot. That will just sort of come up a lot. Uh, but we'll talk about all sorts of things. Biology, as I said, forest fires. Of course, is a completely different thing. Um, geophysics, all sorts of stuff. So this is a really important. So this is the thread of the thing, right? Um, there really is, will be a little preface now of scaling. So let me say that. Um, so power law size distributions. I'm just going to get this into you. We're going to do problems on this kind of repeatedly throughout the semester because this is stuff that no one really understands very well. No one has a good handle for it. Um, even if you kind of start to know something about it, there's always another part of it that can be asked. Like they're, they're weird. Um, uh, so we'll talk about, and we'll, we'll go through mechanisms for how things become things, right? For some of these big universal stories. Why do we end up with these distributions over and over again? Um, allometric scaling will be a big piece. Um, it's probably the little piece will be here. Um, just scaling in general. Robustness, you know, why things explode when they seem so nice and strong and everything looks good and they function beautifully, but then they go bang. Complex networks, very, very big piece. Um, just what's the structure of them? How do these things come about? How do things run on top of them? Very, very hard. Uh, then we'll talk about you know, contagion, voting, all these pieces that, that really happen on tops of networks. Um, and as I said, complexification. Why do, why do we get anything, right? We want the theory of everything, but anything would be good. Okay. Why is there anything? Um, okay, There's a, you can look through this. This is sort of a basic template of the, of the course. That's in the syllabus as well. All right, um, so we'll have some fun with uh, maps. I'm, I'm going to try to sort of make this postcard thing work, okay? So we're going to visit some things. Um, I'll come back to it. We'll talk about it. So this is Gaussians. We're going to visit this place. Um, 
unpredictability, right? Mount very surprising, mount exogenous. So there'll be a few of these little pieces. Something to do with random walks. We'll get to this. These are going to come later on, but I'm just going to say this might be a map. I really have this idea of a big map. Not yet made. OK. Um, <coughs> yeah, so the road of surprises. Trees of unusual size. There you go. All right. That thing is out of the way. Yeah. All right, so there'll be these sorts of things. That'll mean something later on. That'll mean something too. OK, let me tell you about projects. All right. So first few weeks, we're going to try to develop projects. This can sometimes get pushed back a lot. We'll see what we can do this time. Um, it might work really well with uh, the Slack thing as well, right? We could have a, if we have teams, we could have projects for each person, for each group uh, being you know, described there. Um, and as I said, it could be novel, something, you know, something where you're really trying to get something published, anything. Or it could be, uh, you know, uh, and I'll give you suggestions of stuff you can work on. Two talks, a written piece. Um, if you want, you can certainly go all out and get onto the VAC, right? The Vermont Advanced Computing Core. Do lots of things there. Um, we have large data sets available if you want to get stuck into them. We have Twitter. We have 20 terabytes, 30 terabytes of that, which is kind of awful. Um, and as I, talk, I talked about this before. All right, and I'll give you a list of um, projects as well. All right. So this is just something to keep in mind. I have a blog post that you could, that links to, uh, links up here, up the top. So the narrative, what I've, I've called it this for a long time, and I just sort of finally wrote it all up, but um, the narrative hierarchy, right? So when you really sort something out, you should end up with a bit of everything, right? So you should be able to explain it in a few words, have a nice little soundboard. And this is not just oversimplifying or being silly about things. This is very serious, right? This is about knowledge, right? Understanding things at all scales. So it's a scaling story. Um, and a lot of things, you know, this is what you want, right? So here's your thesis or your, your, your magnum opus. And you, you can tell someone in five minutes, in one minute, in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes. You can explain it at those different scales. Um, you know, here's a real thing. Here's some fluff on top, right? This is marketing, right? Someone really made something. And then someone, another group comes in and puts the fluff on top. This is, you know, the graduate student with their thesis. And you say, you know, can you tell me what you're doing? And then three hours later, the dinner party is destroyed, but um, they've explained, you know, chapters four through eight. Okay. And that's true. I mean, it's happening. You get, you get right in the weeds of things, and eventually, like, oh, you know, it's about this whole thing. Uh, okay, so that's a thing. Um, all right, I'm not going to get to the next piece. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all the defining stuff in the next Next lecture, that's okay. But let me give you a few, um, few pieces here. So this is, a, this is a book that I, I was, a, I first sort of came across complexity. It was a popular book in 993. Uh, and it, it kind of, it followed on from James um, Gleick, or Glick, right? Chaos was a very famous book. It was a very serious book. It covered a lot of real things that people had done. Um, it was about this great field called Chaos, or this very, very exciting, interesting field. And then this, this was the number of sort of books that came afterwards. Like, let's, let's have a, what's the next thing? And it's not quite, it wasn't as baked, right? Um, and this is a long time before, you know, the data piece really starts to come in and, and help us figure things out. And certainly well before anyone was talking about networks. There are some networks in here, but not a lot. Uh, this is my friend Marikoff, who's a um, brain surgeon now, and he was the one who handed me this book, so I'm going to mention him. Um, he's a... Want to be scientist? There he goes. No, he's a scientist. Yeah, of course he's. Um, there's a Terry Pratchett reference there for you, uh, for those people who are so inclined. All right, a couple of popular books. So here's Gleick's more recent one, The Information, which is fantastic to read. I mean, this is very, you know, it just covers an enormous amount. The alphabet is in here. Everything's unbelievable. Um, this is about information and data. Uh, these are a couple of popular books. So Melanie Mitchell is a long-term um, uh, member of the Santa Fe Institute, which is sort of the progenitor of a lot of of the uh, ideas around complex systems. Neil Johnson, his colleague of ours who's down at Miami now, um, was at Oxford for a long time. Uh, but these, so these are friendly ones, right? Uh, what else do we have? So Zip, uh, this is a republished version now, so you can get that for not too much. So this is a very famous book, it's a very interesting book in terms of the history of people quantifying social phenomena. Uh, Schelling, who's a Nobel laureate in economics, uh, his famous book, from, it's from 78, to, and it's very much this story. Like, well, let's think about the micro behavior, people doing certain things, making certain choices. How does that give rise to um, 
you know, everyone switching to a particular choice, whatever it is. He has all sorts of things, like people adopting um, hockey helmets in hockey, right? No one would wear them because it was, you know, not the right thing to do, but eventually everyone switches. Lots of different pieces in there. Philip Ball, who's a uh, nature a writer at Nature, uh, he's written a lot of books, published a lot of stories, very beautiful, produces beautiful things. Um, this is a kind of a survey of the time of, again, like all these physicists working on all this sort of social phenomenon, this pedestrian dynamics, there's all sorts of things in here. Okay, there's that one. Um, you know, this, is a very, this is a piece that we don't really get to in this course, but it's, it's algorithms and evolution, right, wrapped into this one kind of big synthesis here. So that's an interesting book you might want to explore. And then this is about what I think comes next, which is stories, right? So that humans are storytelling things, homo narrativus. Um, and these are, these are attempts to understand what that means for social phenomena. Uh, these are more textbook type things. So this comes out of the social sciences against Miller and Page, who are at um, Page, um, Scott Page is at University of Michigan. Miller is at um, see Michigan too, right, yes. Which has a big complex systems group. Santa Fe Institute as well. Um, so that's more about social phenomena. This is, you know, from a physicist, all sorts of things in natural, so earthquakes, all sorts of stuff in here. You could dig into that if that's your sort of thing. Uh, and this is an attempt for a textbook from, a, from an actual course. All right, um, there's some online things. So Melanie Mitchell has an intro to complexity now. This is coming out of the Santa Fe Institute. It's a friendly online thing. Uh, Lara Adamic, who's now at Facebook, was at University of Michigan. Uh, she's in the big data science team they have there. Uh, lots of stuff about social network analysis. And there's our course. Uh, lots of centers around the world. Um, there's us. Uh, there's the NICO is a big one. That's Northwestern. Michigan's been there for a long time. There's Nexi. And of course, the Santa Fe Institute, which started a lot of this. And it was started by economists, Nobel laureates in, in economics and physics, right? So Murray Gell-Mann, who came up with quarks. And then, you know, all sorts of Phil Anderson, another famous physicist. So kind of very interesting. So you know, I'll, I'll make jokes about these people, but this is, this is the start of a lot of things. Um, Nautilus magazine has been sort of emerged as this kind of great uh, thing. It's all, everything's online. You can buy the magazine as well, but it, lots of beautiful things are being produced by this. And Complexity Digest is like a little, if you want something about papers and you know, recent works and so on, that's a, a feed that you could go to. Of course, now it's on Twitter. It used to be just a, uh, an email thing. OK. so. <laughs> we'll, we'll have the, um, so that's sort of most of the nuts and bolts. We'll start talking about complexity properly on Thursday, and then we'll talk about, and we'll have this manifesto thing, which is very short. It's just a basic thing to say, yes, yes, we are, and we can, and we should, and this is right, the right thing to do, um, because it's been, a, it's been a kind of an argument and a fight for a long time. Uh, and then we'll talk about scaling, which is full of all sorts of interesting, crazy things. There'll be nails, there'll be organisms, there'll be things with horns, there'll be Moore's Law technologies in there, all sorts of good stuff. All right, so that's a start. That's just a start. And there's a lot of stuff that I will transmit, but um, off we go. All right, thank you.